Ya estamos al aire, ahora sí. Buenas noches a todos, gracias por estar aquí con nosotros en nuestro programa Beyond Beauty o Belleza, más allá de la belleza. Belleza y algo más. <risa> Hasta se me olvidó a mí mismo. <risa> ah, aquí tenemos a Anita que nos está colocando el en vivo del Instagram para que se conecten. Gracias a todos y a todas por estar aquí. Este es el último programa del año. Así que, no. sí, este, ¿del año? ¿No es el mío? No, tenemos el próximo lunes. ¿Cuál es el próximo lunes? No, 30. 30. ¡Ah! <risa> ok. Estoy dando información incorrecta. No es el último, todavía nos falta el programa del 30. Así que sigan conectados. Um, hoy tenemos un programa bien interesante. We have a special guest. Um, como siempre, tenemos uh, invitados de lujo. Personas que uh, más allá de su carrera de belleza o de fashion o todo lo que tenga que ver con arte y belleza, tienen algo más que aportar a la sociedad. Ella es una invitada que, aquí les voy a leer en mis notas, su carrera. Su nombre es Ashley Hazard. Uh, conocí a Ashley como modelo y realmente me sorprende porque a lo largo de su carrera ha hecho muchísimas cosas y más que todo en el área de la filantropía, que es ayudando a la gente. Ella es maestra, pero venga, les leo un poquito en mis notas lo que tengo acerca de ella. Ashley ha sido una persona que ha estado desde pequeña uh, en el área de las artes, uh, por ejemplo, la fotografía, baile, uh, tap dancing, painting, y uh, se graduó de una escuela de arte. Esto la llevó a ella a promoverse como una um, artista también supportive, que soportaba causas, o sea, que hacía apoyo a causas uh, como uh, charity, y uh, fashion shows for charity, charity fashion shows, uh, in order to support those uh, philanthropy causes. Uh, she's an amazing girl, so I wish you to be connected, and all the people who know her, uh, stay tuned because she's going to be here soon. So we're going to uh, keep talking about her uh, career and all the amazing things she's doing right now. She got new projects. She got a lot of things to say. So we're going to come back after commercials and we're going to talk to her. Mi nombre es Mariana Santos y soy consultora de migración y refugio aquí en Canadá. En mi compañía se llama Santos y Associates Immigration Inc. Hacemos toda clase de documentación sobre inmigración. Llevamos a cabo refugios, razones humanitarias, visas de estudio, de trabajo, de turismo. Acérquense, consúltenos a nuestra oficina. Estamos siempre dispuestos para usted. Los espero aquí tanto y asociados en la esquina de Kirk y Wilson con una sonrisa para usted y para su familia. Muchas gracias. Hablando entre mujeres, tu programa que es diseñado para toda mujer que le gusta avanzar, que está esperando mucho más allá de ser tú misma. Hablando entre mujeres todos los días martes a las 7 de la noche, acompáñanos a tener una noche amena. So for you that you're listening, Hablando entre mujeres, Talking Between Women is the program you want to belong. Just come every Tuesday at 7 p.m. and we'll be gladly give you some details about women empowerment. <laughs> and we are here with Ashley. How are you, Ashley? Hi, I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Thank you for being here tonight. I'm very happy to see you again. I'm so excited to see you again. <laughs> okay, let's make sure that this microphone is making justice. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, hello. So, yeah, we are here with Ashley. And actually, uh, I met her. It was like five or six years ago. It was a while ago. Oh my now. God, a while ago. Right? And it was you modeling. It was at a photo shoot. You did it my was makeup. a photo shoot, yeah. I it did was a nice exquisite. Katrina. Oh my God. <laughs> this woman is so talented, let me tell you. Oh, this tonight is about Thank you, baby. You. you are so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So, yeah. So, I met her that way, and I know um, on 
my notes, I have that you start modeling by accident. I did. What is that? <laughs> I did not want to be a model. I So backstory, I come from a family of photographers. My uncle oh. is a National Geographic photographer. My mom did portraiture. So I spent like the majority of my childhood with someone sticking me in a chair and saying, just pose for this picture. Just stick your chin <laughs> up. Just look out this way. And I hated it. It was just one of those things I did not want to do. So when I grew up or when I started to grow up, it wasn't really even on my radar as to something that I'd really be interested in. I thought it was something that your family made you do at awkward events. <laughs> and then a friend of mine asked if I wanted to be involved in a charity fashion show. And I said, wow. well, yeah, of course. Like, it's, that sounds fantastic. Meanwhile, I'm thinking, she's thinking behind the scenes. Uh -huh. So I go to the charity fashion show. She's like, what size are your shirts or what size are your measurements? And I thought it was for like a crew shirt. Because again, at the time I was involved in a lot of behind the scenes things and that was kind of the norm. So I gave her all my measurements. I didn't really know. And I get there and they put me in a wedding gown that had been custom made and kind of like shoved me down the runway. And I, I did the whole thing. And I realized, well, wait a second, this isn't so bad. I kind of love these. It was really fun. Oh, that's the way. That's and how, how I started. how old you were at that time? I was 19. 19, um, very young. Pretty young, yeah. I was, I was in my first year of undergrad just trying to reach out to my community and make connections. And so volunteering for a whole bunch of different things. And yeah, I was reading that in your biography. I'm really like, you know, not surprised because I know you're a very kind person, but it's very impressive. Oh, thank impressive. you. And I really love that because, you know, the purpose of my program is to showcase beauty beyond mm -hmm. the, the makeup, beyond the fashion, beyond that, you know, that, that's that what you makes show. you so wonderful. This is like the <laughs> definition of you. I love it. Oh my God. Thank you. It's beauty inside <laughs> and out. Show. <laughs> so this is beyond beauty, something like that you can show to people. Like she's in the modeling, right? She take photography. She's a photographer too. She yeah. takes amazing photographies. So if you need her, just you can follow. Let me you know. can tell. What's your uh, Instagram before we continue? So my personal Instagram is the Hazard. My last name's Hazard, so I, I go by the Hazard. We have it there, so you can it's read it somewhere on the screen. Yeah, on the screen. Um, so that's my personal one, and then I shoot for photography under Nyx. So N Y K S. So my handle there is shot by Nyx. Oh, that's amazing. So follow her. So we were uh, saying that uh, the purpose of this program was uh, to portray, to showcase something more something beyond that the person has to show like I know her as a model but I know I have in my notes many many things that you did like you start at very uh, early age mm -hmm. in arts mm -hmm. right like painting tap dancing acting like many 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 things in the art world so how do you feel doing those things like I'm you still doing those things right now? Or it was something that you the only when you were a kid? Thankfully, I'm not tap dancing. I was really, really bad at it. <laughs> so I'm not doing that anymore. Um, but it was, I mean, I'm, I'm still doing a whole bunch of things in a variety of different ways. I think my creativeness has just taken different outlets. So for years, like my early years, I did a lot of like painting and dancing and gymnastics, a lot of physical things. And now I'm doing a lot more creative things, but with my creative eye. So a lot more photography and creating kind of like parade floats with my new company and, and paintings oh, yeah, and structures yeah. for charities. So it's, I mean, same, same, but different. Okay. So evolving. You it, evolve exactly. in yeah. the art thing. So it means that you can, uh, like, for example, express yourself exactly. in a different way right now. Yeah. Like, for example, taking pictures. Taking pictures. So since when you're taking pictures, like, professionally? <sighs> professionally, probably three years now. It's, it's relatively new, three or four years okay. now. I've, like, I went to school for it. So originally, I actually went to an arts high school, and my major was screen arts. Okay. So we were trained in doing, like, film, directing, cinematography, photography, um, and really into the behind the scenes. So I was trained in it then, but I didn't really take it super seriously until uh, about three or four years ago when I was running an online magazine. Uh -huh. And the photographer that we had scheduled for the shoot wasn't able to come or didn't like you wasn't said, able. I can do this. Exactly. We had we had a beautiful model, we had a setting, we had a location that was wonderful, and I was like, Well, somebody has to do it and I, I think I can figure this out. <laughs> Turns out I wasn't half bad and oh, the rest was kinda so history. Cool. Okay, that's amazing. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> So another thing, th talking about a philanthropy, because I know that you do a lot of that. And I really Try love to. it. Try to. Yeah, I was reading that you are uh, involved with United Way. Yeah, that and was one of the first And you ones. raised money, like $8,000 yeah. back in high school. Was that? So back so in how high school. So how was it? How you developed that? Um, because that takes a lot of courage to do it. 
Like raising money is not easy. It's not. It's it, it is a challenging process for sure. But I think when anything's driven by passion, it becomes mm. easy. Passion for helping people. Passion for helping people. And passion is contagious. And I think people want to help. They just don't always know how to. And so once you figure out how to connect the dots and make that help uh, accessible for them, make it a way that they can actually do it in easy, measurable ways and give them like a, a measurable ask, they're more than happy to help and do it with. Them. My God, so, but this is impressive. Yeah. $8,000 on your own and you were very young. So, we, so what, what was the strategy to do it? So for that one, um, when I was in high school, I was actually president of my school's United Way committee. So we had a whole council oh, for okay. it. And every year we had Carp Day, which was like a big carnival basically. And my theory was it was, there were like 2,100 kids. If every kid in the school donated $4, okay. then we could easily reach our goal of what was $8,000 or whatever it may be. So you just, you just make small measurable goals and you divide it up and say like, okay, this is the ask that I'm having. If you ask one person for 8,000, that's a lot to ask. Oh, for. yes. But if you make it really, really reasonable and also you find ways to make it fun for people. So you play off people's strengths. Some people are able to give financially, which is wonderful, but some people are able to give their talents, like singing or mm -hmm. comedy or whatever it is. So you find ways to play off of what people can give. And then again, it makes it fun and it makes it accessible for everyone to give back towards a cause that they believe in, which I think kind of generates movement and exactly. you get results. That's amazing. That's it. So that was that <laughs> You one. know what? You make it sound like, oh my God, this is so easy. I want to do it <laughs> tomorrow. I want to do that. <laughs> a lot of things in life seem really hard until you make an action plan. Exactly. And then you're like, this exactly. is doable. Action. Exactly. Yeah, because we, we have dreams. We all have dreams, right? Mm -hmm. But I think the difference between the dream and the reality is the action. Yeah. Right. We um, this morning I was talking with my daughter about like many ideas that we had, and sometimes we stay longer thinking, mm -hmm. and then we see another person. Oh my God, she did it! Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because we didn't take action yeah. in the right time, exactly. and this is very important. Very important lesson. <laughs> so plan. you're an international athlete. <laughs> oh my God! Tell me about it. Static Group Gymnastics, two thousand and four, two thousand and eight. So yeah. you compete for four years in a row at an international level. Yeah. So tell me about that. Um, so rhythmic gymnastics and I kind of met by happen circumstance. I think my mom <laughs> saw a flyer on a school like billboard <laughs> when I was four. And I literally just started doing it that way. And it was like once a week, really easy, nothing, nothing huge. Um, but I stuck with it. And it was just one of those things where I liked it. I wasn't super talented at it. I really wasn't. <laughs> um, and I, but I was committed and I was interested and dedicated. And so I kept trying and trying and trying. And then one day, I got a call from one of the head coaches and they said, Ashley, the Team Canada is going to Virginia. So this was when I was like 12. Oh, wow. So they're going to Virginia to perform for this performance and we're short a girl. Do you want to sub in for this one show? And they're like, you're going to have to practice extra. You're going to have to come in, put in long hours. There's no guarantees of anything, but you'll get this one shot if you want it. Exactly. And I took it. Oh, and wow. it just kind of worked. And I was fortunate that I befriended the team and realized that like a team is not just talent it's it's personalities and it's passion combined and we we together shared the same vision and so wow, they brought me along amazing. for the ride and you mentioned something that it, for me is very important commitment yeah commitment yeah and these days it's very hard to find people with that value i think so and uh, youth for example mm -hmm. i know you mentor uh youth yeah. Right, yeah. and it's very important these days that people are very influenced by social media, mm -hmm. and this is the million-dollar question: How do you deal with the social media pressure, and how can you, like, tell people or the youth uh, to deal with it in a way that is healthy, but they 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 need to be there sometimes because mm -hmm. they are creating their own businesses, they are creating their own platforms to show their own you know, things, yeah. but at the same time, um, social media is pressuring them mm -hmm. to be a person that they are not. Yeah. And that's making, you know, people think differently and that's, that's right. affecting mental health. Of course. So what do you think about all this whole scenario of mental health? Because I know you are part of this movement. Too, yeah, right? no, absolutely. It's so important. I mean, our mental health is, is who we are. It's the core. You can't do anything unless, unless you are you're in the right headspace for it. Exactly. I think the biggest thing with social media, especially with kids, is just like constant reminders that like you are seeing everyone's highlight reels. Don't compare your behind the scenes to their highlight reels. Mm -hmm. Everyone has bad days. Everyone has ups. Everyone has downs, but not everyone's posting about that. So right off the bat, you need to remember that. Um, and second thing is I think just be yourself, be authentic with it. 
Like those are the best stories. People are interested in hearing about who you really are and they want genuine people. They don't want something that's constructed or fake. You, ha you have to be authentic. I think people are tired of that fake thing yeah. these days. Like everything that is plastic is not there anymore. It's mm -hmm. like not interesting yeah. anymore. Which is nice. <laughs> Oh, I'm very happy about that. Yeah. I don't know if you see, um, if you saw the Miss Universe um, contest. Mm -hmm. South and Africa. I'm very happy with the result. Oh, like she's I am wonderful. extremely happy because this girl is powerful. She is. She's smart. Mm -hmm. She knows what she wants. Yeah. And she's really like super talented and she wants to help people mm -hmm. in a way that it, she said, I don't know, for me, what's very impacting when she said, I want every kid and every girl to see my face yeah. and reflect themselves mm -hmm. in my face. Like, you know, yeah. feel related to it. Mm -hmm. I think that's so <clears throat> powerful Absolutely. because it's not the beauty that the, every every day we see this beauty with you know yeah. lips and boobs and all the hair with extensions and that she didn't have any of that no she didn't have any of that she's very flat mm -hmm. it's beautiful she's beautiful that way she is she didn't have any yeah. extensions and she's just showcasing who she is and i think that's amazing what do you think about her she's brilliant she's passionate <laughs> i was just listening to an interview with her on trevor noah the other day and it was just so neat to see the passion in her eyes and the excitement that she she had not just for for her own opportunities that were about to come with this new win but for the opportunities of future children and future generations who are going to grow up seeing a role model like her and like once you see something being able to be achieved by someone like you you're much more likely to and exactly so exactly. it's very i'm very excited for the next generation who's Me growing too. up with these role models oh my god this change that this twist yeah. is making me so happy yeah. because it's very inclusive it is right yeah. it is like everybody could be you know using this platform to do something really empowering not only be pretty not only mm. post to a magazine cover not only just be an agency to make a lot of money, yeah. but do something for someone, mm -hmm. right? I think this is amazing. Yeah. I'm very excited about it. Okay. <laughs> Good things coming. Yes. So your passion for volunteering, this is something that you have since you are very young. Yeah. And I know that you are doing something in Bolivia, or you did it, right? Bolivia, I did. You, like a youth ambassador yeah. for this movement, Impossible to Possible? Yeah. What is that? So Impossible to Possible is an organization that was started by a man named Ray Zahab, who essentially was a very mm -hmm. sedimentary man. He like he smoked a pack a day of cigarettes. He watched TV. He didn't oh, wow. exercise. And at around 40 years old, his brother came to him and was like, you're going to die. Like, if you don't take care of yourself, you're going to die. You need to, you need to start looking after yourself. He's like, okay, fine. I'll start doing something. And he started running. And he okay. realized he was actually pretty good. He wasn't fast, oh, wow. but he was good and he could run. And he ended up running across the Sahara Desert. Commitment. So it was a lot of commitment. And he ran across the Sahara Desert with two of his friends. And Matt Damon ended up making a movie of him. And essentially he realized everything in life is 90% mental and the other 10% is in your head. Exactly. So everything, <laughs> it's all a mental game. So he realized this at age 40. And he's like, what if I start teaching this to youth? And so basically what he started doing was going around. He started this organization called Impossible to Possible. And their aim is to inspire, educate, and empower youth using the medium of adventure. So they give wow. kids these, like, kids between 17 to 21, I think, is the time kids. frame. So, like, older kids. Um, but they give them these, like, seemingly impossible challenges. And they, they allow them the tools and the opportunities that they need to train and prepare for them. And they give them the opportunity to actually see it through and build resilience and see that they can really make the impossible possible. Wow. And how do you get involved in it? So when I was in third year university, I guess, I was procrastinating from studying for an astro bio <laughs> exam, like mad. And I had this <laughs> TED talk, there was Western News TED talk in the background. And Ray, the man who did this was speaking at the end of it. He's like, I believe that everything is 90% mental and the other 10% is in your head. If you do too, like reach out to me and I'll, I'll bring you on as one of my ambassadors. Now I thought that this just meant I'll go around to schools. I'll talk about the program. It'll be easy. I'll stay in London, whatever. So I applied and I sent in my application. No, 24 hours later, I get an email being like, you've been selected as the top 10 in the world. Would you like to do a Skype interview? And I was like, well, sure. So like, well, this is very dramatic for a classroom presentation, but okay. Uh, another 24 hours goes by and found out I was selected. And it wasn't just to be an ambassador in classrooms. It was to be an ambassador in Bolivia and to go to Bolivia to run six marathons in six days across the Solardi Uyuni. 
Oh so that's what God. we did. We, uh, that's myself awesome. and four other ambassadors from all across the world, we got flown out and we ran six marathons in six days together and broadcast it to over, what was it, 22,000 youth nationwide. And it was, oh my God. It was very, very Which cool. Year? It, this was back in, this was a while back now, this was 2011, I believe. Uh -huh. Yeah. So oh it was neat. God. And every That's year so cool. he does two trips with kids. The trips are all free. Like they're, it's absolutely phenomenal. The trips are all incredible and all slightly different. They're not all running. Some of them are walking or hiking or something physical. And you, are you still involved with that or is it something that you just did once and then, or? So I do the, I did the trip once, um, yeah. waiting to come back for my ambassador. I'd love to go back as a mentor on one of the trips. They okay. go like through series though. So they rotate through because there aren't that many trips. And how can, ambassadors. for example, people that are interested in doing the same thing, how can they, um, get involved in those things. so if you just go to impossible to possible.com you'll be able to find check all the information check it out free trips for youth honestly like they're totally free these trips are worth ten thousand dollars they open your eyes open your mind literally it changed my life um if you're a teacher and you want to get involved you can sign up to be an impossible to possible classroom and you can log in and then when we're on the expeditions or when Ray's on the expeditions with the youth, they can broadcast to you and your kids can ask questions and actually interact. So it was really cool because when we were in Bolivia, the focus mm -hmm. that year was science. Um, and we were learning about the the secrets of, of the solar that was going on out there. So wow. kids were learning about the environment back in their own classrooms and asking us questions about what we were seeing while we were actually interacting with it. That's so amazing. It was really cool. Oh my God. Yeah. I am really proud of you. Oh, thank you. I, that, so that many amazing, things but. like... Oh, wow. No, it's good because people can learn how to do those things, right? Yeah. Because sometimes people are, oh, I want to collaborate. I want to help. I want to do mm -hmm. something, but they don't even know how to start. They don't even know yeah. where to go. And they don't even know about these organizations. Yeah. So it's very important that you are telling them, hey, you can just go online and apply for these, this, and that. This is very important. There's... I really, really, really like that. Yeah. No, it's so true. And honestly, like, I wish I had known about half of them before. Like, I stumbled upon most of my opportunities in life by pure accident it was like i happened to meet the right person at the right but you time had nice accidents. The right they were all very happy <laughs> like, accidents. oh my god I'm not really not very good i've got good luck but i mean i i did seek out a lot of them I too that like that right it's transfer <laughs> you've already got it you're off <laughs> this you're so sweet it's true so no i'm very proud of you very proud of you and uh, you are a teacher too right i am yeah. so tell us a little bit about that experience because Teaching is something that I really like. Mm -hmm. I'm really passionate about mm -hmm. like transferring what you know yeah. to others and they can become like better versions of themselves. Yeah. So are you a teacher of uh, kindergarten, teenagers? What's your Everything spectrum? and everything. Uh, so I've been teaching for the better part of a decade now. Um, oh, 10 years teaching. It's been a while. And uh, school board, like Toronto? School? I'm with the Toronto District School Board, District. which is really great. Um, mm -hmm. It's phenomenal. I, I, te I taught full-time last year. This year I'm doing select supply. Mm -hmm. So I go in selectively to certain classes and do a lot of leadership development. Um, I teach French. I teach home ec. There's oh, my God. French. Oh yeah, the whole spectrum. So you speak? It's, oh my God, you speak French. I do. Oui, absolument. Je peux parler français. My dad was That's a French okay, professor. I, I didn't really have a choice in the matter. But I don't even know a bit of French. Maybe you speak Spanish. Yeah, so speak Spanish. same but different. I want to learn French, and one of my goals for uh, 2020 is to learn Mandarin. That would be. I'm great. like, I need to learn that. Wobu <laughs> Mingbai. Oh my God, you speak that. <laughs> I spent some time living in Shanghai, so I picked up a little bit here For and how long? Uh, so it was over the span of two summers. The first one was like two and a half, three months, and then the second one was, was three months flat, I think. Oh, my God. Uh, it was, it's wonderful, but it's really tricky. Like, it's a challenging language because they have tones, whereas in, in English or French, I mean, Tell we, me we have... something. Oh, my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> well, moving by is I don't understand, and it basically got me through everything. <laughs> but, for example, if I ask you a, a question, you can answer the question in mandarin? in mandarin oh no no oh no. okay it could have for a while they're like basic questions i could have told you like my name i could say i don't understand how much is something <laughs> it's really it took me probably how do you two ask months people, to hear the tone what's your name in mandarin well i don't know anymore i don't oh. want to answer it <laughs> Ni hao ma, I shi li. That was, oh. hi, my name is Ashley. Okay. It's, it's tricky. It's a, it's a beautiful language, and there's so much history to it, and meanings, and tones, and words. And But it took my mm. ear, because English is so different. There's, there's, the tones are so different. I wasn't used to hearing the different tones, and there are four different tones in Mandarin. So it took me a while four to even be able to tones? hear the differences. Yeah. Oh, wow. Now I can hear them, which was my big accomplishment. So oh, I'm, like, ready yay. to get to the next stage of learning. <laughs> 
Oh my God, that's awesome. So mm -hmm. that's my next goal. Let's see what happens. You should do it. I will try. Duolingo. <laughs> that's where it's at. I will try. Poco, my daughter, poco. my little one, she speaks French. So she was uh, in a French emergence full mm -hmm. time that's until fantastic. fifth grade. Amazing. After that, she's forgetting a little bit the French, but she still wants to. It comes and goes. Oh. Honestly, yeah. languages are like bicycles. Like if you send, <laughs> send her to a place where they only speak French and her brain will start switching back to Oh, it. yeah. A hundred percent. Pick it up. Yeah. Quickly. That's so amazing what you're doing, Ashley. Thank you. So we're going, we're coming back with Ashley after commercial. So stay tuned. See you soon. <laughs> Marcela Cano, Carlos Zuluaga, si quieres vender o comprar, tu casa es nuestra prioridad. Para mayor información, 647-297-0506 y 647-404-2171. La comunidad cristiana y del Monte de Santidad le invita a sus reuniones de crecimiento espiritual. Cada domingo a las 10.30 de la mañana en 49 Sandringham de Brampton, Ontario. También puedes acompañarnos los viernes a las 6.30 de la tarde para estudiar juntos la Palabra de Dios. Y si te encuentras en Toronto, estamos en el 88 Park Lawn en Etobicoke. Todos los miércoles a las 7 de la noche, juntos creceremos espiritualmente estudiando esa hermosa Palabra de Dios. Ven y compartamos juntos este tiempo de edificación espiritual. Te esperamos. Obleas and Waffles to Go se prepara para darte lo mejor, pero para esta Navidad encuentra nuestras anchetas navideñas con arequipe, strawberry jam, blackberry jam y las famosas obleas de Obleas and Waffles to Go. Próximamente les contaremos en dónde vamos a estar ubicados. Contáctanos y haz tu pedido. And we're back with Ashley. Thank you again Thank for you. being here because I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying this so much. And okay, I have something to ask you. It's about uh, the recent project that you are in, yeah. which is Emily 2050. What is that? Emily 2050 was a film that was produced a couple years ago now, um, and it was done by a wonderful friend of mine, Ardy, and our producer, Saroosh, and it was the story of this woman who figured out how to make AI real, basically, so it's figured out how to make that transition into AI and make them more than just a computer, that to have them actually have a personality and a soul, but in order to do that, she has to make the ultimate sacrifice. So it's a very dramatic science fiction thing um, that came out, and it, it was really cool. It was one of those projects that I, I don't think I realized what it was going to be when I got into it. I really thought it was just going to be like this small indie feature, and the next thing I knew, it was going all across to Dubai and New York and all these different festivals. So, <laughs> Oh, my God, was, bad luck. It was neat. It was good <laughs> luck. I don't know. <laughs> you have good luck. I love that. I have great I luck. That. That's amazing. So you were the main character in I that? was, yeah. Role? It was really cool. Oh my god, I yeah. want to see that. You should. I you can there it's online somewhere, I'm sure. Um, but it was one of those things where already the the director, he was it was his story. He was so passionate about it and he had created Emily already the robot. So he was wonderful with like CGI and computer graphics and had created this robot version of what Emily was supposed to be. And I was doing, in his studio doing a photo shoot for a client of his who was a designer. And at the end of the shoot, he's like, stop. And I was like, stop what? He's like, just, just stop for a second. Mm -hmm. Look at the screen. And I was like, okay. So I looked at the camera. He took a picture. He's like, come back. Now look at this screen. He looked at the screen. He pulls up the robot and he pulled up my face. And they were like perfect images of each other. It was so bizarre. Oh my God. And he's like, you're her. And I'm like, I, I don't know what you're talking about, but sure. I, I mean, I look like your robot, yes. And then he told me the story. He's like, you have to do this. And it was literally like one of those right place, the right time. It wasn't the right moment. I didn't seek out to do it. It just worked out really well. And I was fortunate that they were incredible teachers and taught me all the tricks of the trade along the way. And oh, my God. So then you start, you, you are acting right now too, right? I so do, yeah. With agencies or something, or are you just on your own? So I, I'm with a modeling agency, um, but in terms of acting, it's all it's all freelance. I've been very fortunate. Um, the very. right people That's have good. found me. There's an incredible <laughs> international community in Toronto, an international film community. Yeah. So there's a lot of work um, that gets shown in India and Pakistan, 
Pakistan and Iran and so there's a huge community within that network in Toronto and they're producing all their things. I was really, really fortunate to have been picked up by a lot of the directors that worked there. That's so cool, um, actually. Yeah. Still, and so so I've been doing a lot of international I'm work. I'm very proud of you. It's good. Yeah, you got a nice look. I'm very proud of you. I'm proud of you, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, honey. So you are the co-founder of a magazine called uh, Skin yeah. Magazine. Skin Magazine. What is this magazine about? So Skin Magazine is uh, it's an online men's magazine that features women for their mind, body, and soul. So it's kind of like Playboy, Playboy meets Vice with a, with a Huntington Post twist, if you will. Mm. So every woman that's featured in our magazine gets profiled. She gets asked okay. questions. She gets a platform to speak. I think one of the biggest things that we noticed, we ended up like falling. My partner and I at the time fell into this niche and realized that there, there was a niche for, for a men's magazine that really empowered women and oh, really empowered yeah. them and gave them a voice and gave them a chance oh, okay. to kind of showcase who they were and what they were doing. So every woman that was featured, again, had the chance to talk about what she was passionate about, what her background was, what she hoped to do with her career, um, and give her a launch pad for something else. Oh, so wow, that's it was interesting. It was really think... neat. Okay, but you're still doing it. You're still it's still in... going on. The magazine's in a bit of a transition right now, so uh -huh. it's changing hands, which is really nice. I'm launching my baby and uh, started oh, a whole new company. Oh, so. Really? Oh, my God. That's yeah. so cool. Times are changing. Can you tell us a little bit about the new company? Or is yeah, no, 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 it's going. It's um, So the new company is Drawbox. It's oh, a design Drawbox. and fabrication company. Okay. So basically we build things. We build things for large-scale brands. So anything from parade floats for Game of Thrones and HBO that need to be displayed. We made a dragon that was puking a rainbow for the Toronto Pride Parade recently. Um, you create those things digitally or just? Both. Oh. So every everything that we create, it's we're, so we physically make the things, but before we physically make anything, we always do a digital render so that the client can see exactly what we're getting. Part. Oh. Exactly, um, and we've been really fortunate to to work. So with, you have a team, or you are doing it with your partner? How is this? So is my this husband and I run it. Oh. I got married recently. My husband and I are running. Congratulations! Dropbox. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I love those pictures. I said <laughs> you're so sweet. <laughs> He's fantastic and brilliant and just so talented and has such a creative eye. So he's kind of the digital mastermind and the fabricator. And then I work on the client relations side and work with people and, and helping them figure out what they want their dreams to be and how we can help make oh, those come wow. to life. So you make connections with uh, the film industry. Within that the film industry, within the marketing theater, industry, or anybody and everything. Or We've corporate, so you got you can do anything. Anything. We've redone office spaces. We've redone homes. We've done assets that were made for like Absolute Vodka's recent commercial campaign. There's a giant light up bottle. It's all over downtown Toronto right now. Really? Um, we made the bottle. The so Absolute Vodka. Absolute Vodka. So they, they have a huge bottle that they needed that was like neon. It was eight foot tall. People had to be able to go through it. It was oh, neon lights flashing. So I we think made I that. saw your story. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. a huge vodka thing with lights mm -hmm. and with layers. And yeah. Stuff. Oh, yeah. So anything physical that, they, that somebody would need to have built specifically mostly for experiential marketing assets. Mm -hmm. So if companies have activations at a concert or downtown, so. we make those things. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing, actually. It's fun. I really, it's really fun. It sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. So, for example, with that company, yeah. can you go to uh, weddings also? You or? can totally go to weddings. I mean, everything from, like, photo walls. If people need, like, flower walls, we can create those. If they needed special things, we've got people who print things specifically on our team, and they're absolutely phenomenal. So if you need, like, signs that are really intricate or unique or you want... Something a, in a different concept, yeah. like very creative. Concept. Exactly. Do you have a portfolio of clients right now or you have, yeah? We do. We're, we're very fortunate. We got some pretty big name clients pretty quickly. Um, <gasps> That's and so cool. it, it keeps growing, but our, our favorite game is just making people's dreams come true. So whether it's an individual who just has a wild idea that they want to see come to fruition or a company that's been going for a while that wants to see their name kind of stand out in the back stand of people's out. minds and have something that would make them memorable in some way for whatever it is, whether it's a holiday season activation or a big corporate event, or again, a concert or a parade, we do that for them. So, so you anybody. can do that, for example, for fashion designers, or photographers, or whoever wants to uh, portray their, th their things like in a bigger way. Yeah. <gasps> Just have passion, have excitement, have an idea. Even if you don't, we're happy to work through it with you. Like we, we've done everything like from counseling and exactly. advising yeah. people how to do it. 
Wow, that's like, wow. <laughs> it's cool. It's it, Again, It's I think the, the common theme is my favorite game is helping people live out their dreams in whatever way, shape, or form. And this is just a new way that I'm doing that within mm -hmm. the marketing world. And it's, it's cool to wow. see. Wow, do you have a, a website Me or too. Instagram? Can you tell people yeah. to follow uh, you? If you're looking for the website, it's just drawbox.ca. If you're on Instagram, it's Drawbox Designs. Okay. So you can check us out. We've got our new Christmas card up on the Instagram right now of us dancing around like elves. It's very cute. Um, so that's yeah, so that's cool. good. Actually, I really, really love that concept. Thank you. Because I know these days everything in marketing is changing. It is. And the world is evolving so quick. Yeah. So the same, you don't do the same things you did last year. Mm -mm. It's like no. moving so fast. Everything is changing. Even in the social platforms, mm -hmm. you see stuff that you, for example, you post um, a year ago. And you see it and you're like, oh my God, everything has changed so much yeah. that you need to keep up with that. So you are in the right business. You are in the right so. business. No, it is. Yeah. Because technology, social media, mm -hmm. marketing, this is it. Yeah. Everybody no, that's needs totally. that. Yeah. Like every person, every company, every, like you said, corporate, weddings, art, artists, yeah. everybody's looking for that. I think like so. I want to move myself in a different way. I want to showcase my business in a different way. And you are there for them. Yeah. High five. Nailed it. <laughs> All right. We're going to commercials again and we're coming back in seconds. <laughs> que tu casa es tu mayor inversión Marcela Cano, Carlos Zuluaga Si quieres vender o comprar Tu casa es nuestra prioridad Para mayor información 647-297-0506 y 647-404-2171 La comunidad cristiana y delán Monte de Santidad le invita a sus reuniones de crecimiento espiritual. Cada domingo a las 10.30 de la mañana en 49 Sandringham de Brampton, Ontario. También puedes acompañarnos los viernes a las 6.30 de la tarde para estudiar juntos la Palabra de Dios. Y si te encuentras en Toronto, estamos en el 88 Park Lawn en Etobicoke. Todos los miércoles a las 7 de la noche, juntos creceremos espiritualmente estudiando esa hermosa Palabra de Dios. Ven y compartamos juntos este tiempo de edificación espiritual. Te esperamos. Obleas and Waffles to Go se prepara para darte lo mejor, pero para esta Navidad encuentra nuestras anchetas navideñas con arequipe, strawberry jam, blackberry jam y las famosas obleas de Obleas and Waffles to Go. Próximamente les contaremos en dónde vamos a estar ubicados. Contáctanos y haz tu pedido. Coming back. Oh my God. Oh my God, you catch me. <laughs> you catch me putting my hat back. Okay. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so, so Merry Christmas to everyone. So we're back here. So I was putting my, my hat back because I had, you know, heat. <laughs> I'm really hot. All right, um, we already talked about the modeling, but uh, what is the um, annual uh, clothing and toys thing that you do yeah. every year? So how do you do that? How do you call people to do it? And what is the whole movement? Is this you on your own initiative? Or? So, far, it's, so it started out, I started teaching at Parkdale, which is okay. a phenomenal inner city school down in the West End of Toronto. And as wonderful as it is, they've got incredible students and incredible families, but unfortunately resources were just a little bit low oh. when I went in. So it started off last year when I got my class full time and I looked around and there was really nothing in my classroom. So I literally, what I did, I went to Facebook and I put out an <laughs> ask and I was like, look, I don't, I don't know if this is possible, but if anybody happens to have anything that they'd be willing to give that exactly. might be appreciated by the school. clothing and stuff like that. Exactly. And you're still doing that? So yeah, so we just you wrapped. You to invite people to do it? Sure, year? absolutely. We just finished up the clothing, um, the clothing and boot drive, which was amazing, but we'll do a school supply drive coming for the spring. So if you have any sort of school supplies, pencils, pens, paper, office supplies, they're always, always in need of that. Okay. Um, so that would be a so huge So you part. donate all those things to the schools? Yeah. People, uh, like low-income kids? 
Basically, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just one of those things where the, the government where they are right now, resources are low in the schools in general. And I think it's... Oh it's hard, especially on communities like Parkdale, where there are families. I mean, there's there are some families that have more than enough, and there are some that just really unfortunately can't give to their kids oh. the same way. And I don't think education should ever be based off of what you're able to have access to. Um, it should be accessible to all. And so That's we try to make it that. And this is this is what we're doing to even the playing field a little and bit. And you do that every year. Yeah, yeah. It's been an every year thing. The clothing drive was was a surprise this year. We didn't. It started off as a basic shoe drive, and it kind of spiraled into an entire winter drive. And what we thought was going to be an extra 10 shoes for the school turn uh -huh. into three whole car loads. <gasps> oh, wow. So well, that I was really I saw your story on there Instagram. Are, you have a lot of full of things. Oh, my God. We, it was so incredible. And it was just like homes upon homes upon homes of people who are so willing to give. So I spent the first, the last couple weeks, literally up until last week, just like driving around, kind of like reverse Santa Claus, going to people's porches, and they'd leave me packages that I'd pick up and then bring to the school. And That's beautiful. It was really nice. Yeah, very beautiful. And you're reminding me about the campaign that we're doing with uh, those and Linea, the channel. Yeah. We're doing this um, next January 4th. We are giving people food and we are Amazing. giving people clothing, but it's going to be on the streets. So homeless people. I love because, that. Because you know, this weather mm -hmm. is very crazy. Yeah. No. And some of them are sleeping in the streets. I don't know how they do that. Yeah. So we are going in um, uh, in cars. How many cars? Were you? Three. Three cars. And how many people? Uh, around like around 10, Fantastic. 9 to 10 people I love from the that. channel are oh, so are going cool. to do that because we are thinking the same. Yeah. We need to give a hand to the ones that are less fortunate. I think that's just that. Yeah. And this is all about like when people say this is the season when they talk about Christmas. It's not about the season. It's about doing it every time. Mm -hmm. They need it, yeah. you know, for the whole time, for the whole year. It's not only thinking, oh, this is the season and we're going to do it only for the season. We always have to think about that yeah. often mm -hmm. in our lives. I mean, we have to be grateful yeah. for what we have, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have a lot. Gratitude changes think about everything. It. Gratitude changes everything. Yeah. Everything. And we are very grateful and very happy to have you here, Ashley. Happy thank to you be very here. much <laughs> for telling us your story and sharing with us all what you do. Thank you. For I have me. some extra questions. Oh, where's yeah. my brush uh, cup? <laughs> Oh, what is the brush cup? <laughs> it's my brush cup. It's very scary. <gasps> there are so many brushes in the brush cup. What is what is this magical brush cup? The brush cup. So are you going to pick three questions? Or okay. four questions. Four questions. All right. <laughs> and then you're gonna answer the question. That's Good. It. Just like close my yes, eyes. Yes. Close your eyes and pick one. All right. Next project. Yes. What's your next project? Oh, my goodness. Uh, well, there are two. Uh, the first one is I'm going to be doing an elderly portrait series. So I'm going into retirement homes and doing portraits of the residents that live there and their families. I spent oh a lot God. of time working. So you're going to take pictures yeah. of them? Yeah. If Just you need my help, I'm done. I'm honestly. Down for it. Yeah. I'm down for it. I would love that. It's, it's one of those things I spent a lot of time working in retirement homes and volunteering as a kid. It mm -hmm. was just where I went, how I spent my time after school. And I realized there's a, there's a lot of people who are lonely there. There are a lot of people who want to talk. There are a lot of people they who want to share to their talk. stories. They need love. They need to share stories. We have so much that we can learn from them. You so. know that my first job when I immigrated to... I was um, in Colombia. I immigrated in 1999. Yeah. I lived for two years in Miami. Oh, fun. Then I moved to Texas, and my first job in Texas was in a retirement home. How cool. Even though that I have my career of beauty, yeah. I love to help people, always. And then I said, oh, this is an opportunity to, you know, interact. At that time, I had no idea about English, oh my so gosh. my English was so little, little. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, this is going to be a good opportunity yeah. because these people, they were all like vet veterans. They were mm -hmm. like, you know, people, they, they were wealthy, yeah. but the thing is they feel lonely. Mm -hmm. They were feeling like nobody loved them. Yeah. The kids, their kids never visited them. Mm -hmm. They had very lonely lives. Yeah. And it was very nice because every time that I served the breakfast or dinner or whatever, they were like talking to me. And they always tell me the same story like 40 times. Oh, that's interesting. So I was like, yes, this is a very nice thing. Yeah. So by the time I was like, I now I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to learn like English. That's a great way to learn English. We should get do that in Mandarin. We should find a way for you to learn like that. That's so Maybe that's really, that's every brilliant. time in home with 
with Chinese people. That would be a great That would be very cool. Good click. <laughs> then, yeah, it was oh, a very cool. nice um, school for me. Yeah. Not only for the language, mm. but for as a life yeah. experience. Because I, I found out that people need to talk. They mm -hmm. need to talk. They need okay. someone to talk to about their past, about how they feel right now, and why they are not visiting me. Yeah. They were asking for that. That question was the most often yeah. that I heard, and I'm like, oh my God, I don't have that answer, but I, I'm here for you. Yeah. And it was very beautiful because I developed a lot of feelings mm -hmm. with them. I and them. at one time, one of them, they were dying very often too, and it was so hard for me yeah. when I, see when I saw the ambulance coming and I'm like oh my god who is right now it's very you know, humbling it's very, and it's very touching yeah. and it was very hard for me to be touched from yeah. that when I changed my job it was very hard for me because I really love and I really you know develop that passion for yeah. you know companion to help to support to you know just be there yeah. listen to someone this is something that people sometimes say, I don't have nothing to offer. Yeah. I have nothing to give because I'm not, I don't have it. Mm -hmm. So this is for people who has money. I'm like, you know what? A smile, just smile to people. Just let them know you're there for them. Yeah. And that's amazing. Goes a long way. They will, they will love that. Yeah. Right? I think so. <laughs> so that's the next So thing. that's part of um, an experience. Mm -hmm. So we have only four minutes, and we have another question. Oh, no, to sorry. Go. Okay, let's see next one. Biggest fear. <laughs> oh man, cheese graters. <laughs> I hate cheese graters. I'm like terrified that I'm gonna grate my knuckles when I when I cook. Really? Yeah, no, it's a real thing. My husband has to do it for me. <laughs> um, no, that's it. I, I'm I'm not really. I don't Afraid have, of anything. No, I'm like, a, I was a very brave child. So I, I kind of, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I scared all the scares <laughs> out of me, so to speak. Um, That's beautiful. Yeah, cheese graters are my biggest fear. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's, That's it. it. I guess this is time for the last one. Um, my best quality. Um, <laughs> I guess there's two really that I'm, I'm proud of. Right. Um, I'm incurably optimistic. That's good. It, it's a wonderful disease I caught from my father. <laughs> uh, I always see the bright side, and I guess it kind of bleeds into my second one, which is I'm I'm very resilient. Mm. I, I'm like not really good at anything. This is what I've learned in life. I don't have supernatural talents at anything. Mm -hmm. I, like mm -hmm. many people have God given gifts. I think mm -hmm. I, I don't. I'm very very resilient though. Um, That's beautiful, and it's gotten me through a lot in life. That's very so. important these yeah. days. You yeah. know, I said these days because I notice that this new generation are um, raised with this entitlement of having everything for granted and they don't they don't want to face um, conflict yeah right so parents they don't want kids these days to face conflict rejection mm -hmm. they don't want that's why these movements of super sensitive community yeah. are developing these things and it's very dangerous yeah. because kids or youth are thinking that oh I don't want conflict so I avoid this oh I don't want this problem so I avoid this so mm -hmm. they are uh, creating these barriers mm -hmm. of developing strength yeah. from those problems yeah so that's very good that you're talking about being resilient mm -hmm. because resilience means like that you're facing your problems and you develop something yeah. new to overcome yeah. obstacles right yeah so that's very yeah. important exactly and i think it's very important to transfer that to this generation because they are very like i said they are not developing that yeah i think it's hard it's and it's hard because they specifically were raised in a generation where their parents were taught like like don't don't tell your child that they're wrong always pump mm -hmm. them up give them a lot of participation awards and again it, it yeah, bubbles them good. a little bit um, but, but growth comes from resistance and there are growing pains for a reason mm -hmm. and life hurts sometimes and it's okay not to win exactly. because you're going to grow from it so long as you make the best from it that's true so. it's, it's not there is nothing wrong with you failing there's nothing wrong no. if you make a mistake nothing wrong with that so just face it and make yourself better yeah next time right this exactly. is what i think it is so last questions last to question. say bye bye to dun, our dun, dun. <laughs> big challenge um curating my legacy 
I think I, I, I'm very much a life enthusiast and I want to do everything, but I think I, even I have to recognize that there are limitations. And so, so choosing exactly what I want my impact to be and just being really intentional with what I do and how I do it and, and just trying to do everything with purpose. That's awesome. Yeah. Great. I love those messages. Ashley. Thank you. And again, I am very proud of you. I'm very happy to have Aww. met you. Thank you. I'm so happy to have met you too. You're so sweet. So sweet. Aww. So we're going to be saying bye-bye for tonight. Bye. Thank you very much for being with us. So the next appointment is going to be next Monday. Mm -hmm. It's going to be December 30th. And we're going to be here at 8 p.m. as always. So stay tuned because next Monday we're going to talk about uh, the weather and the impact that the weather has in your skin and your hair. So we're going to have some little masks and treatments for that. Okay, so stay tuned <laughs> and see you next Monday. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Dos en línea TV, tu nueva opción en radio online. Síguenos en redes sociales como Dos en línea TV. Porque dos es mejor que uno. Por eso ustedes y nosotros somos Dos en línea. Dos en línea TV, la, la nueva, nueva propuesta, propuesta en radio digital. digital.